Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I hope you guys are doing well. So in today's video, we will be discussing about translation exposure. In this, we'll be covering about the meaning, methods of translation and designing a hedge strategy. Right? So before we begin with, I have already made a video on the all the types of foreign exchange exposure that is translation, exposure, economic exposure and the transaction exposure. Please go and check that video. I will provide you the video in the description box. All right. So let's just begin with what is the translation exposure. This is basically the financial exposure that is being faced by the MNCs that operate in various subsidiaries from different countries, say like India or in Australia, Europe, so on and so forth, right? So whenever the financial statements are being consolidated of the subsidiaries, okay, to the parent company, then the translation exposure comes into the picture. So let's understand the meaning. Firms consolidated financial statements can be affected by changes in the exchange rate, right? So in the previous video, I have already explained you with the help of an example. Supposedly, there is a company MNCs that operates in US, right? It is a parent company. It has various subsidiaries. We are taking into consideration the three subsidiaries, say one operating in UK, one in Africa and one in India, right? So whenever the financial statements are being made of these subsidiaries, these will be in their own home currency, right? However, when the final accounts will be made, the consolidation of the financial statements will be done of the parent company. The All the financial statements will be converted into the parent company currency, right? So whatever is a fluctuation in the exchange rate is known as the translation exposure. I hope I have already cleared you this thing, right? So in this, what happens is if the parent company is situated in a country with a different currency, the value of the holdings of each subsidiary needs to be converted into the currency of the home country, right? This exposure is no, also known as the accounting exposure. So let's just take an example. There is an Austrian subsidiary of American company what it does it it purchases a building worth 1 lakh euro on 1st of September 2021 right on that date that is 1st September the exchange rate that is euro euro to US dollar was 1.20 so they have recorded their building that is in uh, 1 lakh 20 thousand uh, dollars they have already recorded in their books however when the total the compilation of the financial statements was done the subsidiaries account was merged into the consolidation on 31st march 2022 the exchange rate went to 1.15 dollars so now it has to be recorded into 1 lakh 15 thousand dollars in their books right now we have various methods of translation first is the current or non-current method then we have monetary non-monetary current rate method and temporal method we'll study all these one by one first is the current and non-current method right we have current assets we have non-current assets i hope you know the meaning of current and non-current you're going to comment this in the comment section right so whatever the current assets or liabilities are there we take into consideration there they are con uh, converted into the exchange rate that prevails on the date of balance sheet right however for the non-current assets or liabilities these are being converted into historical rate now if i say that my historical exchange rate is 1.20 and the current rate is 1.15. Now let's see how we will convert it. I told you that in current and non-current method, what do we do? All the current assets or liability are taken at current rate. Whatever the exchange rate is prevailing, we take into consideration. So the uh, sundry creditors, right? Cash in hand. Sundry debtors, these all have been taken as a part of current prevailing 
exchange rate however others that is non current long term debt will be non current capital and then your buildings this has been taken at the historical rate right any confusion till now please comment in the comment section then we have is the monetary or non monetary method okay so what are monetary assets basically uh, monetary assets or liability they have the fixed amount of money that does not change for example cash the amount of cash will be the same the debtors whatever is a liability from the debtors they are going to pay you the same amount that will not change with the exchange rates the creditors and loans right whatever is fixed is known as the monetary assets however whatever the value of the assets such as machinery buildings capitals which fluctuates with the market value is known as the non monetary method thus we can say that all the monetary accounts are being converted at the current rate of exchange whereas non monetary accounts are converted at the historical rate right let's take an example the example is the same that the historical exchange rate is 1.12 and the current rate is at 1.15 so we've already started that all the monetary values will be taken at the current rate and non monetary at the historical rate so over here we can see monetary is the current creditors right then we have is the long term debt cash in hand and sundry debtors whereas non monetary will be the value the market value of which it keeps on changing capital and building has been taken on the historical rate next method is the current rate method this is the simplest of all that you take everything on the current rate of exchange except for the stock of capital right except for stock of capital everything has to be taken on the current rate of exchange over here what have we done we have taken everything on the current rate except for the capital that will be on the historical rate easy last method is the temporal method this method is same as monetary and non monetary except for its treatment about the inventory now over here you guys need to note over here is that the value of the inventory is generally taken at historical rate but if in the books the inventory is measured or taken on market value then it is being converted into the current rate right if i say that we have taken the inventory uh, the books in the books it has been recorded at 1000 euro then the value of conversion will be at the historical rate however if the prevailing if it is prevailing on the market value then only you take the current exchange rate that is prevailing right last is the designing of the hedging strategy over here we have two strategies basically first is the balance sheet hedge and another one is the derivative hedge in balance sheet what do we do there are various items in balance sheet we have liabilities and we have the assets right so if there is any mismatch the assets and liabilities are actually hedged so that they do not mismatch in their final value and about the derivative hedge what can be the derivatives your forwards then options swaps right we have already discussed about the derivatives hedge in the previous lecture so you guys can go and check out that in detail So that is it for today guys I hope you have learned something if yes then please do like share and subscribe to my channel thank you and have a nice day